over the course of this lab or this course, over the course of this course, um, you'll have to make graphs. Um, so in many cases, we'll want to draw a graph um, of some observable effect Y versus some, um, uh, some effect X or some control parameter X. Um, and oftentimes what we'll want to do is if we've made some measurements and let's assume we've associated an uncertainty with each of them um, and we'll, we'll do this at different values of X. At some point, we'll want to look at whether this is um, described by a line. Uh, so we'll try to fit a linear dependency um, to those lines. Uh, so, so this is the kind of plots that you should be able um, to make and of course also assess whether uh, there's, uh, there's a good fit or a bad fit. Um, so we'll get to that of course in due course. Um, one thing that I've, I've shown here is um, each of those points has an uncertainty in the y direction only. Um, why did I not include an uncertainty in the x direction? Well, typically we'll be able to limit the uncertainty in the x direction to be much smaller um, than the difference between the points here. Um, and so uh, it, it won't be necessary to include the uncertainty because it might, you know, in effect, it might be included in the size of this symbol here. Um, so it won't be important for our, uh, um, for our analysis. In some cases, however, um, we will have to include the, um, these both X and Y direction uncertainties. And that will be when they're, for example, of similar size or they're varying from point to point. And then you'll find plots like this. Um, one case where this, this occurs is in uh, an analysis of uh, some systematic effect where you're both measuring X and you're measuring Y. So on both X and on Y, you have uncertainties. Whereas here in the first case, um, in the first case, we, we explicitly set the value of X. We're not necessarily measuring it. So um, if we set something, um, we're typically more confident about the actual value that we set it to. Um, but beyond that, everything is of course the same. Even in this case, we can fit a straight line um, to a set of points and assess whether, for example, these two points here, the fact that they're not on that line is, is significant or not. Um, it is often going to be easiest to try, um, let me stick to the same color here. So often it's going to be easiest to try to um, stick to linear relationships. So in the case of uh, in the case of these two graphs, I've of course drawn a linear relationship. If there's a, a measurement where y depends on something x squared, um, what we would do instead of plotting y versus x is now plot um, y versus x squared. So if we plot y versus x squared, then once again, I expect this to be a linear dependency, right? Um, these these data points actually agree too well with the line. That's one thing. One of the things you'll start to realize when you look at a lot of data plots is that um, it, it's very unlikely for the line that fits a couple of data points to go through all of them at the same time. It's much more likely that there will be at least a few where it doesn't go um, through the uh, through the uncertainty through the error bar. Um, so this actually looks looks a little bit incorrect because it agrees too well with the line. So this is one example where we would want to do some uh, transformation on on the axes um, so that we can uh, we can still fit a straight line rather than to have to come up with other other formulas. Another example which is very common is if y is somehow described by an exponential decay behavior. So in this case. We could do th two things, right? We could plot y versus the exponential of minus t over tau. Um, but the other thing we can do is instead of changing x, we can also change y. So in this case, we're going to fit, or we're going to plot the, the natural log of y versus t. And so what we'd get now, so of course, um, a negative dependency since this is a decay process. Um, and so we'd see something like this. Um, so this is the logarithm of y versus time. Um, 
And actually, there's another thing we can do, even in the cases where um, where y is just supposed to be identical to x or, or proportional to x, um, we don't necessarily have to plot y versus x and then fit a straight line to it. Um, but one of the things we can also do is we can plot y over x versus x, right? Um, so in this case now, we would expect to find things that fall on a straight line because the um, y over x is supposed to be a constant value. Um, so there's different ways in which we can plot things. Uh, we don't just have to measure, uh, don't just have to plot um, one measured value versus some input parameter x. Um, we can uh, we can do some math on um, on what we plot on each of the axes. So when you get a set of numbers y and a set of numbers x, um, think about how you might want to plot certain things um, so that they're they're best represented in a graph.